good morning. We'll remember in a particular way this morning Yolanda Scolaro. Please join me in the entrance antiphon on page 836 in the Missal. The Lord speaks of peace to his people and his holy ones and to those who turn to him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the peace of the Holy Spirit be always with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate well these sacred mysteries, in a moment of humility before God and one another, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask God for pardon and for peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us all of our sin and bring us together one day unto life everlasting. Let us pray. Stir up the will of your faithful, we pray, O Lord that striving more eagerly to bring your divine work to fruitful completion, they may receive in greater measure the healing remedies your kindness bestows. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the book of the prophet Daniel. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came and laid siege to Jerusalem. The Lord handed over to him Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and some of the vessels of the temple of God. He carried them off to the land of Shinar and placed the vessels in the temple treasury of his God. The king told Ashpenaz, the chief chamberlain, to bring in some of the children of Israel of royal blood and of the nobility, young men without any defect, handsome, intelligent, and wise, quick to learn, and prudent in judgment, such as could take their place in the king's palace. They were to be taught the language and literature of the Chaldeans. After three years' training, they were to enter the king's service. The king allotted them a daily portion of food and wine from the royal table. Among these were, the, were, the, were men of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. But Daniel was resolved not to defile himself with the king's food or wine. So he begged the chief chamberlain to spare him this defilement. Though God had given Daniel the favor and sympathy of the chief chamberlain, he nevertheless said to Daniel, I am afraid of my lord the king. It is he who allotted your food and drink. If he sees that you look wretched by comparison with the other young men of your age, you will endanger my life with the king. Then Daniel said to the steward, whom the chief chamberlain had put in charge of Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, please test your servants for ten days. Give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then see how we look in comparison with the other young men who eat from the royal table. And treat your servants according to what you see. He acceded to this request and tested them for ten days. After ten days, they looked healthier and better fed than any of the young men who ate from the royal table. So the steward continued to take away the food and wine they were to receive and gave them vegetables. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and proficiency in all literature and science, and to Daniel, the understanding of all visions and dreams. At the end of the time the king had specified for their preparation, 
the chief chamberlain brought them before Nebuchadnezzar. When the king had spoken with all of them, none was found equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And so they entered the king's service. In any question of wisdom or prudence which the king put to them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his kingdom. The word of the Lord. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you who look into the depth from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, praiseworthy and glorious forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. When Jesus looked up, he saw some wealthy people putting their offerings into the treasury, and he noticed a poor widow putting in two small coins. He said, I tell you truly, this poor widow put in more than all the rest. For those others have all made offerings from their surplus wealth, but she from her poverty has offered her whole livelihood. Rejoice, for this is good news, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we're, we're just so uh, soon off of the Thanksgiving Day holiday and yesterday's feast day of Christ the King, Prince of Peace. How is it that we can foster within our lives this, an attitude of gratitude, as, they, as sometimes is popularly said? How is it that in our lives we can not only say that Christ is our king, a prince of peace, but actually follow more closely the prince of peace. There's a great connection between the civic holiday of thanksgiving and trying to give ourselves more and more to Christ, the prince of peace. And that is at the very beginning of anything we do, before we do anything, we do it from a place of gratitude. Whatever prayer we begin to say, we first begin our prayer with an awareness of gratitude. That's always personal. At any given moment, what is it that God is holding within our heart and life that that if we, at that moment, have a sense of gratitude for us, it's going to give us a peace that only the Prince of Peace can give. So even as we begin our prayer, what is it that God is asking me to be grateful for? As we begin any conversation, and it might seem a little silly or ridiculous to say that before any conversation with another person, we consciously have in mind, what do I need to be grateful for in this moment? It sounds silly because, you know, gee, well, how could, we, how could we begin every conversation from a place of gratitude? That would be almost impossible. It's impossible if it isn't a habit. But if it's a habit, it can be done in a split second and without a thought. 
but our habits had take work. What would your day be like? What would my day be like? What would the day be like for other people that we interact with if we decided that as Lent, as Advent approaches, as we try to live out Advent to welcome the Prince of Peace, that we were going to take something that seemed as silly as beginning every conversation first from a place of gratitude. What do I have to be grateful for at this moment? If we were to start every conversation that way so that what might be awkward for us now or seeming ridiculous became something of habit, how might the Prince of Peace be a greater part of our conversations? And it's not limited only to conversations. It's limited to every single moment of our day. If we started to choose moments of routine in our day and say, I'm not going to begin this load of laundry. I'm not going to leave the house to do errands. I'm not going to turn the TV on. I'm not going to pick up this book until I, I acknowledge what I have to be grateful for in this moment from God. If we did that, particularly if it could become a habit in our life, our world would change, and the world of others too. Mm -hmm. Let's offer now to the Lord some of the needs that gather us this morning. For the Holy Church of God, shepherded by Pope Francis and all the bishops in the name of the Good Shepherd, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations look first to caring for the needs of the most vulnerable of their people, treating them with mercy, compassion, and kindness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are oppressed by unjust rulers, for all whose well-being is disregarded by those in power, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the hungry, thirsty, and strangers in our midst, for those who cannot afford to clothe themselves, clothe themselves or pay for the proper medications, for those who find themselves in prison, may they be comforted and healed by our merciful actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are seeking the Lord, May they find the face of the one true king reflected in the actions of our community of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in a special way, we remember Yolanda Scolaro. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we ask you to listen to the prayers which we have voiced, but as always, to the quiet ones of our hearts. And if they be for your greater honor, our greater good, that you grant them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Would you pray with me that this our sacrifice, yours and mine, might be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty? Accept, O Lord, the sacred offerings which at your bidding we dedicate to your name, and in order that through these gifts we may become worthy of your love, grant us unfailing obedience to your commands through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as with joy we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her faithful spouse, 
the blessed apostles, and all the saints who are pleased to do your will throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me in the communion antiphon, page 886. O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations, for his merciful love toward us is great.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that those to whom you give the joy of participating in divine mysteries may never be parted from you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go now to live it in peace and in joy. Have a great day. Amen.